Let's clap our hands and give our God the glory. He is an amazing God. He's a worthy God. Come on and clap those hands. Forget about who's next to you and just talk to him. Tell him you love him. You bless his name. You give him praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. One more time. Clap those hands. Hallelujah. Come on, clap. No one else can receive glory. No one else can receive the glory. And no one else can receive the praise. No one else can receive the praise. No one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the glory. I said, no one else can receive the praise. No one else can receive the praise. Because he's holy. Holy. And righteous, righteous, omnipotent, omnipotent and mighty, mighty Alpha, Alpha Omega, Omega, my Redeemer, my, Redeemer, my Savior. Savior. No one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive praise. No one else can receive the praise. I said, no one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the glory. And no one else. Can receive praise. No one else can receive the praise. Because he's holy, holy and righteous, righteous omnipotent, omnipotent, and mighty. mighty Alpha, Alpha Omega, Omega, my Redeemer, my, Redeemer, my Savior. Omnipotent and mighty. I said he's holy and righteous. Omnipotent and mighty. I said he's holy and righteous. Omnipotent and mighty. Alpha, Alpha, Omega, my Redeemer. No one. Glory, to you. we give you glory. 
Hallelujah. That's better. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Well, we want to welcome everyone here um, and those that are watching um, by way of YouTube and Facebook to our Bible study here Tuesday night. Hallelujah. We are excited to grow in God tonight. If you feel watching in our cyber sanctuary, we want you to hit that share button and so this gospel can go around the whole entire world. Amen. And let's prepare our hearts uh, for a blessed time in the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I am so excited because God is good. How good is he? Oh, he's very good. Praise God. I want to thank God for this opportunity to be able to once again stand in here at Perfecting Church, in my home church, to preach the word of God. And I pray that you have your ink pens and your, your notepads, and I want you to take notes tonight. Amen? Amen. First of all, I want to say thank God for our bishop and uh, our first lady. Let's praise God for them. Thank God for their, their love and their passion for us and the vision here at Perfecting Church. We are moving forward. Amen? Amen. I said we are moving forward. Amen. I said we are moving forward. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. I thank you for this opportunity tonight to preach the word and we ask that, Lord God, as the word goes forth, that it falls on fertile ground, Father. Let those that hear, hear the word of God, that they may grow and understand the word of God. And I pray tonight, Lord God, that as you anoint me tonight afresh to be able to deliver your word that will change lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, hallelujah. I want you to open your Bibles and turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 4. Elder Scott, you're going to be reading tonight. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 4. All right. Read. Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 1 through 11. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit. Into the wilderness into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil to be tempted by who the devil. the devil read and when he had fasted 40 days uh-huh and 40 nights he was afterward a hunger he was what he was hungry 40 days and 40 nights that's a long time yeah. amen read and when the tempter came to him uh-huh he said if if thou be the Son of God, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Command that these stones be made bread. This is the tempter. To tempt simply means this. It means to entice or attempt to entice someone to do or acquire something that they find attractive but know to be wrong or not beneficial. Do I need to read that again? To tempt means to entice or attempt to entice someone to do or acquire something that they find attractive, but know to be wrong or not beneficial. Satan is the tempter. All right? Read. But he answered and said, it is written, Mm -hmm. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You see, Satan wants access into your life because he knows Jesus was hungry. You know what I'm saying? Make these stones bread. Did Jesus have the ability? Could he have done it? Yeah. But he didn't. Why? Because Jesus understood his assignment. And whenever the enticer or the tempted one 
comes into your life to entice you to do something that's beneficial to you, but you have to understand that my assignment is to do the will of God. So your enticing is trying to make me, what? Do the wrong thing, but I'm not. Because Jesus said, it is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Satan wanted Jesus to be led by his appetite and not to focus on his assignment. Are you there? But he answered and said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but every, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. What it means when it says it is written, it means that it's an appeal on the authoritative scriptures because the word of God is authority. We have tenets here at Perfecting Church. Tenet number one, we say we believe. In the word of God, that's the word of God, as contained in the Holy Bible, that it is, number one, inerrant in where? Its content. In its content. The word inerrant, <laughs> you go going before me now, he read it. It's inerrant, inerrant means that it's incapable of being wrong. That's right. This is the word of God. The authority is in the word of God. So the word of God is incapable of being wrong in its content. It says it also that it's absolute in its authority. To be absolute means that the word of God is not diminished, it's not diminished in any way, shape, or form in its authority. And it is complete in its revelation. To word complete means that it has all the necessary component, all the necessary pieces, everything that's needed to make this thing happen. Are you with me? It says in Psalm 68, 11, it says what? You guys should know this, all you Bible students, that the Lord gave the word and great was the company of them that published it. 2 Timothy chapter 2, chapter 3, excuse me, verses 16 and 17. All scripture uh -huh. is given what? By the, inspiration. By the inspiration of God. And what? And is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, Instruction in righteousness. All right, y'all got this thing. What about 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21? What does it say? Elder Scott, read it. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. This we're talking about our tenet, the word of God, as contained in holy scriptures. And we said it is inerrant in its content, absolute in its authority, and complete in its revelation. 2 Peter Chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Knowing this first. Knowing this first. That no prophecy of the scriptures. That no prophecy of the scriptures. Is of any private interpretation. Is of any private interpretation. No part of it. Hallelujah. And in verse 5 says, Then the devil taken him up to, into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle in a uh, pinnacle of the temple. The pinnacle itself was a place or a seat in the southwest corner of the temple itself where the shofar or the ram's horn was blown. Are you with me? It was blown to call the people to worship on the Sabbath or the Old Testament holy days. Are you with me? And in verse six it says, and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, Cast yourself down, for it is written. Now, what gets me is that the first temptation, Jesus was saying, it is written. Now, the second temptation, Satan's going to be trying to be like him. Well, it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee, concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stones. But in verse 7, Jesus said unto him, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord 
thy God. Verse 8, and the devil taketh him up unto an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world. Say all. Oh. That was a high mountain, right? Showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. This is what he did. Satan don't care if you're saved or if you're unsaved. He's coming at you. Ask the music industry. Ask Diddy. Different ones that will sell their soul so they can have the glory and the prestige and the power. Are you with me? And said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou was just fall down and, 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 and worship me. Satan wanted to give him worldly recognition. Satan had it to give, but he wouldn't have offered it. Satan has, had it to give, but he just wants you to just, no, just, just fall down and just worship me. I know you're tired. I know that you're hungry and you're thirsty and your body is feeling some kind of way, but you know what? I'll give all this to you. You can have every, all the kingdoms, all the women, all the men, all the banking industries. You can have everything you want at your disposal. All you got to do is just bow down. And what did Jesus say? Then say of Jesus unto him, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> For it is written, he said it again, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And in verse 11 it says, Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. This is my favorite part right here. The devil leaves when you don't back down. When you quote that word, sometimes you might even not know the scripture, but you know in your heart that it's God. You can quote that thing, but sometimes you may not know, and a song may come up. He may not be there when you want him, but God, is he's always on time. Amen? Amen? I can't quote the scripture, but I know that he's always there for me on time. Amen? Amen. In the body of Christ, which is a church, has a marred view of who Jesus is. They have a misconception of what he represents. We have believers that look at Jesus as the one who was made in the image and likeness of God. And then we have those in the church that believe that Jesus was made in their image. You get what I'm saying? Without in a relationship, without you spending time in the word of God, without prayer and fasting, you cannot build your relationship with him. And so therefore, you become like the Pharisees or the hypocrites. They present one thing, but inside they are dead men's bones. You present this facade as if you know what you're talking about, but yet the power of God is not resident on the inside of you. So when I said, when you think that Jesus is made in your image, you have it all figured out. Oh, yeah, he was a carpenter. But guess what? They show pictures. He, he was a carpenter. They showed him with wings on his back. They showed him as being a European with pink rosy cheeks and things like that. No, 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 no. If he was a carpenter, he would have dirty hands. Come on, listen to me. Hands that were scraped, peeled, because when you're building, those things happen. You have rough hands. That's the man I want to follow. <laughs> the scripture says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, 15 through 17, it says, Christ, who is the image of the invisible God? the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created. By who? By him. by him all things were created. Let's read. 
For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are in earth. So all things were created by him in heaven and earth, visible and invisible. Jesus is the express image of the invisible God. Are you there? Yes, sir. Whether there be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now, he is the, the tempter, tempting him with something he already created. In heaven and earth, dominions, thrones, kingdoms, he, by him all things already consist. So how are you going to offer me something that I created? Jesus was the son of God, created in the image and likeness of God. He was 100% man and 100% God. How is that possible? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That Word eventually became flesh and dwelt among men. In that fleshly body was housed the Holy Ghost, the nature of God within him. Now, are we striving to become Christ-like or like Christ? Christ-like? Or like Christ, which one? It's kind of a play on words, ain't it? To be Christ-like is one who has a relationship, the Almighty God, who is walking faithfully in his presence, in his word. Because you can't understand the intent of scripture unless you understand the content. So here we have a believer that's walking in the things of God, reading their word, that's praying, that's doing what God has called them to do. The scriptures become live unto them. As they are praying, the Holy Spirit brings things to life. So they are growing. They are coming more Christ-like. When Jesus said, who do men say that I am? They look around. Some say that liar. Some say that the prophet. This, that, and the other. But who do you say that I am? He said, "Well, I think he had to pause for a minute. Like, well, well, thou art the Christ. Now you've been walking me for a little while. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the Living God." So Jesus said, hey, "All right, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father, which is in heaven." Yes, so there are many that walk and look the part. They are like Christ in a sense, but yet they are not Christ-like. You feel me? He's like, well, what is he talking about? He's not an English major. I'm sure not. But I hope you get what the Holy Ghost is saying. <laughs> Amen. How we view Jesus affects how we behave uh, in our life and how we respond to the things and circumstances as it relates to Scripture. If we see Jesus, do we see him as a racist? Then why are there racists in the body of Christ? Do we see him as a sexist? Then why are they in the body of Christ? Are these people Christ-like or like Christ? <laughs> Somebody says neither one. Was he a fundamentalist? These are things that people in the body of Christ have viewed Jesus as. We have a misrepresentation of Jesus. Yes, he died. Yes, he was resurrected. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. But he also lived to be our example in everything that he did. 
We need the Jesus that lived 33 years. That's why I want to get to know him better and better. So we have to relearn ourselves to who Jesus is. Not think we know who he is. We have to learn or relearn the scriptures. That's the Jesus I want. I want the Jesus of the Bible. Amen. I want the Jesus that healed the sick. Hallelujah. That raised the dead. How, wasn't afraid of the religious and the political leaders of his day. He sold some of them, hey, look, you of your father the devil. You a bunch of vipers. That's the Jesus I want to know. That's the Jesus. Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's the Jesus I want to know that said that. He said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. That's the Jesus I want to know. Because he understood where we are. And that's why he said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That's the Jesus I want to know. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. He said, blessed are those. That's the Jesus that I'm talking about. That's the Jesus that I want to know. Are you with me? Uh -huh. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. This is him speaking. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. I say, that's me. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's the Jesus I want to know. Blessed are you when men shall revile against you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. That's the Jesus that I want to follow. Oh, he's speaking the truth. He's speaking into my life. Can you relate to that? Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. He lived to teach us how to live this life. Amen? We don't need methods anymore. We don't need gimmicks. We don't need any of that. We need to know the Jesus of the Bible. There's an assumption because Jesus was meek that he was weak. You know, and I don't put pictures up of who they, that's not him. I'm saying there are pictures, a little hair, you know, this, that, and he looking like this. Oh, he's twirling through the tip, you know. That, that, that's not Jesus. Jesus was a man's man. You see what I'm saying? But the powers that be, they presenting an image that they want you to see and believe. Now, if you look at that image and you look at the word of God, come on now. Something's wrong. <laughs> Somebody just laughing. <laughs> Woo, Hallelujah. Like I said, there's an assumption that he was weak. To be weak is the lack of the ability of power. Now, was Jesus weak? Mm -mm. Meekness is power under control. Now, he was meek. Yes, he was. But he had the power under control yes, because he understood his assignment. Yes, Meekness is the ultimate expression of that strength, which means you make the decision. You make the decision how you will and won't use that power. <laughs> For example, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 47 to 53, we know that Jesus was betrayed by Judas. And Judas gave the religious leaders and those of that day a sign to identify that this is 
the one. In other words, he is the one you're looking for. So when I, when I kiss him, you come on in. So when he went to Jesus and, and tried to do what he needed to do and kiss him, he said, wait, 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 friend. Friend, come here, elder belief. Imagine this is uh, Judas, and you coming to me and don't kiss me, but just seem like you do. <laughs> he kissed me, and I say, friend, what you coming to do? How that would make him feel? He called him friend. You was in charge of my money. It ate at him so bad that when Jesus said, friend, he never knew he was a friend of Jesus. But yet he made a decision to betray him. Thank you very much. So when he betrayed him, Judas gave him signs. So the religious leaders of that day took him into custody, and Peter got upset. <laughs> Peter took out his sword, and he went to go slashing. He cut off the ear of Malchus who had nothing to do with it, per se, but you were guilty by association. You was with the high priest. Some say he was a slave, but he may have been a judge or a ruler, but you was with that clan. But when Peter cut off that ear, Jesus was like, wait, man, come on now, don't. Wait, what you doing? And he says in Matthew 26, verse 53, he says, thinkest thou that I cannot now pray unto my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. So he's telling Peter, Peter, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? I must go through this because I understand the assignment. So I got to redo some things. I got to pick this guy ear up and I got to go and heal that man in the midst of me being arrested. Are you with me? I can call 12 legions of angels right now. I'm like, Jesus, boy, you should have just did that. They would have came down banging. I mean, he was destroying everything. But because he knew his assignment, he did not act upon that. Because here's an example of meekness, power under control. <laughs> Jesus uses his strength strategically because he understood his assignment. He was not passive. He had strong responses when it came, when they came against him. Like I said before, he called religious leaders vipers. He called them devils. He, he called them all kind of things. But sometimes Jesus said nothing. Some things do require a response, and some things don't require a response. But when you know who you are, that's why I love my bishop so much, because I know that people probably came to him from all over the world with all these great ideas about what you can do to, to make your ministry this, that, and the other. See, and bishop the type of guy say, look, I'm a man of prayer. Unless God showed me, it ain't happening. So bishop says, no, we're not going to do that. And they get upset, like, oh, man. You know. See, Bishop understands his assignment. Don't you know years ago when people came and left and things like that, now is the time that those that are here, you are the necessary ingredients to enhance the vision of God. Ooh, you, you are at the best place to be in Detroit. God is moving by his spirit. Oh, hallelujah. When Bishop, who, Pastor Haynes preached Sunday? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's awesome. We have anointed elders and ministers here. We, we get the word of God. Pastor, make sure we get the word of God. And when he's doing his assignment, Pastor Haynes gives us the word of God. 
I want you to know that Bible. I want you to know him. I want you to just like surge or people that go to school for 10, 15 years, become doctors or physicians and things like that. I want you to be precise just like that. I want you to know that word. Are you with me? We must understand what happened prior to Matthew chapter 4. Because it started out saying then. That means that well, what happened before? If you look at Matthew chapter 3 verse 16, what does it say, Elder Scott? 316. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This was a voice of God saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. How are you saying you're well pleased? He's just, no, he's pleased because he's walked this thing out. He grew in favor with both God and man. He grew in stature. Jesus, like you and me, we, 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 we can make mistakes, but he chose to obey what he was called to do. A loud voice. This was a public affirmation of his father in front of everybody regarding his identity. If you want to be in ministry, you better know who you are. If you want to be in ministry, you better, I'm telling you, you got to be prepared. You got to have all the tools necessary. First of all, the word of God. You need that. Because in order to understand the intent of God's word, you got to understand the content. We at Perfecting Church, we say ministry means people. Amen? Amen. Ooh, God has been bringing them. People getting saved every week. Uh, uh, small as they coming, man. I'm like, they, they, they come and they getting saved and they join in the church. And we're growing like crazy. I'm like, man, we just had over, I don't know, was it 20 or 40 people that just joined Perfecting Church a couple of weeks ago. Oh, my God. You can't tell. You see, these people that come in, they are off the streets, some of them. And you can't talk to them with a religious mind. They need to see Christ in you. They don't need to see some kind of form or method or unto. No, they need to see Christ in you and so they can see the real you. They're coming. We can't deny them. Ministry is service for God to others. Ministry should be out of affirmation, not for it. Mm -mm -mm. People looking to be seen and want to get these accolades. Uh, nobody's like that here. Uh, we, I'm telling you, God will humble you real quick. You think you know everything and you try, you're not the pastor of this church. Ah, we have a great leader. We follow the leader. We follow him as he follows Christ. And I know I say that all the time. See, I'm this type of person. I don't, you, you, don't, you don't go running up behind your leader. Playing all the time and this, that, and the other. When he, you, don't, you don't do that. Don't try to become familiar with your leader. Because what happens is the enemy will come. The first time he don't see you, he might, his wife might call him and say, yeah, baby. And, and you think he just ignored you. You have to watch that to not become too familiar with what you think and know. Follow him after the spirit. Hallelujah. God wants to make sure you know who you are before you get busy in the things of God so that you don't use your busyness to discover who you are. Yeah, are you with me? You're not gonna use it. You should already know who you are before you get busy. Don't get busy and say, okay, I need, I, no, no, God wants you to know who you are. He wants you to know your identity. God says that he don't want you to be attached to what you do. 
I need you, he said, to know who you are before you start. So there's a preparation stage. Are you with me? Because you know who you are, you know who you are not. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. I'm not just some kind of bond. I am the head and not the tail. This is what the scriptures are saying. I am above and not beneath. I know who I am. We will never be effective in our assignment trying to find out our identity in it. God looks past the motion and he looks at your motive. He said, this is my beloved son. Satan comes and challenge everything the father said about him. If you be the son of God, Satan tested him to see whether or not he believes that the truth that was just spoken about him. The same way that Satan showed up in the Garden of Eden. Y'all know the story. If you go and read Exodus 15, 16, 17, 18, he did the same thing with the children of Israel. So when the serpent beguiled Eve, he tricked her. He didn't trick Adam. Adam was influenced by Eve. And what the enemy does, he gets the people very close to you that you have a relationship with, and he'll trick them with things, but yet they'll influence you to make the wrong decision. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> because Adam was created in the image of God, right? Jesus was the second or the last Adam the scripture talks about. Eve was tricked, but Adam was influenced. Satan's primary mode of spiritual warfare is that he wants to argue with you. He wants to test what you know. He wants to go back and forth with you, have God said. If you be the son of God, commanded this. So Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, he says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Strongholds are not necessarily handcuffs. And I know sometimes we heard preachers say that stronghold is some hope. So I used to say it. Some, stronghold is something that has a strong hold on you. But a stronghold is a, 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 a fence, a, a, a fortress, and it serves as a place of protection and comfort. The word of God says that he is a stronghold. God provides a place of comfort and safety. Are you with me? Strongholds is a place um, that has been fortified so as to protect it against the attacks of the enemy. They are fences, they are fortresses. They stop the enemy from coming in. You got to figure out how the enemy is always getting in your business. Who left the door open? Oh, oh, he got in and he's sitting on your couch. Now he's eating out your food. He made himself at home. That's his tactics. It is the battlefield of the mind. The scripture says, give him no place. In other words, if you allow him an inch, he'll take another one. He'll keep, you got to speak the word of God. You got to say, it is written. You got to quote the word. You got to speak it as you speak it. It's a two-edged sword. It cuts down the attacks of the enemy. In Luke chapter 4, we see the same things, the same story. But in the beginning of Luke chapter 4, it says that Jesus uh, went in to the wilderness, led by the Spirit, with the power of the Holy Ghost. And then at the end of it, he says that the, uh, the end of that chapter says that the, the, uh, uh, when, when, when the devil left him, 
He left him for only a season. That means that it ain't working right now, but I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Because as I study your life, I know that there are some areas in your life that, uh, <laughs> that I know I can get in. I'll get to somebody that's close to you or uh, cause things to happen on your job. But you got to know that you know that when you fast and when you pray, the enemy is always trying to get you to do something that is not part of your assignment. When you stick to your assignment, there is power right there. God honors his word. Amen. Amen. Oh, we serve a mighty God. It is written. Speak the word of God. We are the children of God. We are. Thank you very much. She's new. She's working. This is her first time. Praise God for her. Now bring me a Coke. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. But we thank God for her. Amen. God bless you. We have to understand that we are in warfare. We have to be believers that are, we have the right tools that are necessary to make sure that we are advancing this kingdom. Amen? Amen. Amen. When the enemy comes, we got to be on it, sharp. When he's coming against, like, say, elder belief in the area, and belief lets me know, look, man, I need you to pray. I'm going to be praying with my brother. I pray with, I don't pray with him, but I call him every day around 10 o'clock, uh, Elder Scott, and we talk and we encourage one another in the things of God. That, 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 that's what we need because you never know. I mean, I get a, I'll get a call and from Elder Wade, he was like, I was just thinking about you. He, what time you got to get up in the work in the morning? I said, well, I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. He said, oh, so do I. So it's all right if I call you early in the morning. I said, man, you're going to be calling my house so early. No, no. No, three o'clock in the morning, I'll call you at four. <laughs> but it's the relationship that God has. He's building something. He's building a camaraderie. He's building a, a friendship between us. And I thank God for it because God is always doing something great. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Let's bless God for his word. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Perhaps there may be someone here tonight and you say, I want to make Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. If that's you tonight, just come to the front and we want to pray with you. Hallelujah. If you praise them, they'll come. Hallelujah. If you want to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, just come on down to the front and we want to pray with you. Hallelujah. As everybody say, amen. We'll wait. We'll wait if that's you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And for those that are outside of sanctuary, if you're there and you say, I just haven't made Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior, I want you to pray with me. I'll do it. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your word. I ask that you come into my life for the rest of my life. Save me, Lord. Clean me up. Make me new again. In Jesus' name, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus was raised from the dead by his Father. With my mouth, I confess, and confession is made unto salvation. If you prayed that prayer with me, God has just came into your life. I'm telling you, God is so good. Hallelujah. He is an awesome God. If you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord to say, we want you to please email Perfecting Church. We want you to email us at salvation at perfectingchurch.org. And we want you to leave your name and information and we will get back with you. Amen. Amen. Salvation at perfectingchurch.org. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. It's blessing time. This is time for us to give. Hallelujah. If you need an offering envelope, the ushers will be happy 
to serve you, just raise your hand. They'll be on their way to give it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want you to know that if you're out there at Cyber Sanctuary, you can also give also into this good work. On your screen, you will see uh, three ways to give. It's dollar sign PC Detroit, if you're doing by cash app. Also, we have text perfecting to give at 732 five six and also you can give uh, by uh, Zale is PC Detroit Zale at gmail.com so we thank God for you sowing into this good work hallelujah glory to God can we get some music playing thank you Lord you to all stand and those of you who have envelopes you're giving please pass your envelopes down to the end of the aisle and those at the end would you please remain standing and our ushers will come down and they will receive the offering in the sepulchre. Father we thank you for this time to give we thank you that you have blessed us and we ask the Lord God you give us a hundredfold return on our giving. Everybody say not as a dead I owe but a seed I sow in Jesus' name, make a like. Actually, I want to do this. No. And I need this. Praise God. We want to thank everyone that have sown again to this good ground here at Perfecting Church. Hallelujah. All right, now I'm going to ask Minister Proctor if he comes forward. Minister Proctor. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, everyone. We praise the name of God. We praise God for Elder Reed and the wonderful word that he's given. Amen. You got to know yourself what God has placed in you. Praise the name of God. Please govern yourselves accordingly as the announcements come at this time. Good evening, members and friends of Perfecting Church. It is time for the Perfecting News. Calling all men. Prayer and conversation is returning. Brothers, mark your calendar for next Thursday, April 25th, and get ready for another great gathering from 6.45 until 7.30 p.m. Pastor Winans invites all men to come and bring another brother with you. It is going to be a great time. The Youth Ministry of Perfecting Church invites everyone out for a day of fun and fellowship as we let the good times roll in a skating party. Saturday, May 4th from 5 until 7 p.m. Purchase your ticket today and let's all meet at Skate World for a day of family fun. Proceeds will benefit the 2024 Youth Camp. We are in full convocation mode. Holy Convocation will take place Monday, May 20th through Friday, May 24th. And it is going to be awesome. Enjoy this clip from just one of our powerful speakers, Apostle Herman Murray, opening day of Holy Convocation. Let me take some time to encourage you and to tell you that ain't nothing wrong with you. Look at, I wish I could, can, can I borrow your hands? Hey man, look at somebody close to you and tell them, hey, but there's nothing wrong with you. Oh no, don't you change because folk, hey man, are cutting their eyes at you. You can't change and stop preaching just because folk leave your 
church. Can I tell you something? I'd rather have five people on their way to heaven than a church full of hypocrites that are on their way to hell. I don't want folk that's coming because it's popular. I want folk coming because they know holiness is still right. Everyone is registering for Holy Convocation this year. Help us make our goal of 1,000 people this year. You may register immediately following Bible study or online at www.pfi.world. Your registration will get us one step closer to our goal. Remember, we are PFI. Wonderful women of PC, guess what? We are all attending CC Winans Generations Live Conference Friday, May 10th and Saturday, May 11th. Here comes CC. Hello, wonderful women at Perfecting Church. It's CC Winans here. Oh my goodness, I am so excited about you all joining me at the Generations Live 2024 conference. Yes, we are thankful for technology that will allow you all to be at the conference while at your church in Detroit. Invite other sisters, invite your neighbors, invite your mom, your grandma. We are going to have an incredible time with these ladies who will be a part of the conference, including uh, Anita Phillips, uh, let me see, Jackie Hill Perry, Joyce Meyer, Cheryl Brady. We're going to have an incredible time. And you know what? Mom Wine is going to be there, and I know you all know and love her. It is going to be powerful. I can't wait to see you all Friday, May 10th, and Saturday, May 11th. Love you all. If you desire to attend Sunday service but need a ride, Perfecting Church can help. Call our church office before Thursday and we will gladly pick you up. We want to worship with you. Feel free to contact our offices at 313-365-3787 if you have any questions. Have a blessed week. Amen. Praise the name of God. Please adhere to some of the additional announcements this evening. Pastor Wine is missing, misses being in service tonight, but he is looking forward to being in the house this Sunday at 1045. Amen. And at 3 o'clock p.m., y'all want y'all got to be there. We got Holy Ghost class tomorrow. I said we got Holy Ghost class tomorrow. Folks been receiving the Holy Ghost. Y'all come on for another infilling. It's going to be tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock p.m. If you want to be baptized in the power of God, Meet us there tomorrow in the chapel tomorrow night. Now, if you desire prayer for any situation, meet the ministers at the altar immediately following service of this Bible study. Praise the name of God. You may stand to your feet as we dismiss. Father, we do honor you and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for Elder Reed and the word that you've given him because it has given us life. God, we thank you for the anointing that is on his life and his family. Bless them. Now, God, we ask that you would touch our bishop and first lady. Wherever they are, wherever they may be, God, we thank you for the gifts that you've placed in them. Now, Lord, we ask that your word would settle in the hearts of men. God, that you would go out and that they would apply this word in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Now, God, we ask that you would protect us from all evil, hurt, harm, and danger. We ask, God, that you would cast the devil out in the name of Jesus. Protect us from death and destruction, God, until we meet again. The blood of Jesus cover each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, go in peace. Have a great day. Amen.